Hey everybody, as a business owner, managing your employees' leave and attendance is important for maintaining smooth operations, accurate records, and staying compliant with labor regulations. Using leave and attendance and Zoho payroll, you can easily manage them. In this video, we will cover the following topics. Configuring leave and attendance, configuring leave types, configuring holiday management, importing employee leave balance, configuring attendance management, configuring setup preferences, Managing leave and attendance on behalf of employees, managing LOP during pay run, configuring permissions for leave and attendance, reports and analytics, disabling leave and attendance. Before configuring leave and attendance, ensure you have configured pay schedule in your organization. Configuring leave and attendance. To configure leave and attendance, log in to Zoho Payroll, go to Settings and select Leave and Attendance. Click Configure Leave and Attendance. Here we have five sections. Leave Types, Holiday Management, Attendance Management, Setup Preferences, and Employee Leave Balance. Configuring Leave Types First, let's configure leave types for your organization and determine how much each leave type your employees are entitled to, how leave accrues, and any conditions or restrictions associated with taking that leave. Click Configure Now. Click Add New to create a new leave type. For the purposes of this video, let's name this leave type as Wellness Leave. Enter a code for the leave type. Select whether the leave type is paid or unpaid. Provide a description of the leave type if you want. Enter the number of leave days employees are entitled to on a yearly or monthly basis. Mark this box if you want to prorate leave balance for new joinees based on their date of joining. For example, if your organization offers 12 days of annual leave per year and hires an employee on July 1st, the new hire would receive half of the annual leave entitlement, resulting in 6 days of leave for that year. Select Reset the leave balance of employees to reset leave balances at a specified interval, either yearly or monthly. You can also choose to carry forward unused leave days or encash them upon reset. For example, an organization allows employees to carry forward up to 5 unused leave days and encash any remaining leave days beyond this limit. An employee with 8 unused leave days at the end of the year would carry forward 5 days and encash the remaining 3 days. Under Employee Leave Request Preference, you can mark this box if you want to allow employees to take leave when they have exhausted their leave balance. If an employee has exhausted their annual leave balance but needs additional leave for a personal matter, this additional leave will result in a loss of pay for the employee, which will be processed in the regular payroll. Select Allow Applying for Leave on Past Days if you want your employees to request leave for days that have already passed. Similarly, select Allow Applying for Leaves on Future Dates for Advanced Leave Requests. You can set limits for both options. Under Applicability and Validity, you can define which employees are eligible for the newly created leave type. Mark this box if you want to postpone leave credits for your employees. For example, in some cases, an organization might delay the allocation of annual leave for new hires until they complete their probation period of 6 months. This ensures that benefit is only applied to employees likely to stay with the company for a longer period. You can also set an effective date and an expiry date for this leave type. Once you have configured a leave type, you can edit, delete or disable it as needed. To edit the leave type, click the More icon next to the leave type, select Edit, make the necessary changes and click Save. To disable a leave type, select Disable and to delete a leave type, click the Delete icon and confirm the deletion. Configuring Holiday Management Next, let's configure holiday management and see how you can manage holidays for your organization across all your work locations. Click Configure Now. Click Add New to add a new holiday. Enter the name of the holiday. Select the start and end dates. Provide a brief description and select the applicable work locations. If it's a single day holiday, enter the same day in both fields. Click Save to add the holiday to your organization's calendar. Once holidays are added, you can edit or delete them as needed. 
Importing Employee Leave Balance Zoho Payroll also enables you to easily import existing leave balances from external records, ensuring a smooth transition when switching systems. By carrying over past leave records accurately, employees can continue tracking their leave without any disruptions, maintaining continuity in the leave management. Click Import Choose the file you want to import. Please note that you can import your file only in CSV, TSV or XLS format. You can also download a sample file for your reference. Select the character encoding based on your import file. By default, UTF-8 Unicode is selected. Select the file delimiter and click Next. Here, the field names of Zoho Payroll are listed on the left side and the field names in the import file are listed on the right side. Match the field names and click Check this box if you wish to use the same mapping of fields during future imports. Then click Next. You will be directed to the preview page where the number of leave records to be imported, skipped and unmapped fields will be listed. In case of any error in the file, you can view the reasons under skipped records here. Based on the reasons, you can correct the records and re-import the file. Then click import. The employee leave balance records will be imported into Zoho Payroll. Configuring attendance management. Let's configure attendance management to customize work shift times, total check-in hours, work duration and attendance regularization policies. Click configure now. Set the regular working hours for your organization. For example, if your organization operates from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., set the check-in time to 9 a.m. and the check-out time to 6 p.m. Select the preferred method for calculating working hours. Define the minimum and maximum hours for a workday. For example, to manage full-time employees, set the minimum hours for a half day at 4 hours and for a full day at 8 hours. If the employee meets only half-day hours criteria, the remaining time will be marked as absent. This ensures that the employee's attendance is accurately tracked and accounted for in the payroll processing. Under regularization setting, in situations where check-in or check-out has been missed, you can choose when the employee can request adjustments to ensure accurate records. They can raise a regularization request from the ESS portal. You can either allow them to adjust the regularization anytime or select the limit request option and enter the number of days in the past for which attendance can be regularized. For example, if you enter 7, attendance can only be regularized for the dates within the last 7 days. Mark this box if you want to restrict the number of regularization days an employee can make in a month. Then click Save. Configuring Setup Preferences now let's configure setup preferences to define the overall attendance cycle, payroll report generation date and leave encashment details for pay runs. Click configure now. Select the attendance cycle to ensure the attendance records are aligned with your payroll processing schedule. For example, if the attendance cycle is from the 26th to 25th, the minimum date for the payroll report will be the 28th, which will fall after the end date that is on the 25th. Select the payroll report generation date. Ensure there is a 3 to 7 day buffer between the end of the attendance cycle and the generation of the payroll report to ensure accuracy. Mark this box if you want to include leave encashment details of employees in a particular month's pay. Mark this box to include overtime hour details of employees in a particular month's pay. Note that leave encashment details can only be accessed if the active leave encashment salary component is formula based. Then click Save. Managing leave in attendance on behalf of employees. Applying leave on behalf of employees. There are instances where their employees may be unable to apply for leave or regularize their attendance themselves. As an admin or a user with appropriate permissions, you can manage them on behalf of your employees. Let's see how. Go to the Employees module. Select the employee for whom you want to apply leave. Go to the Leave tab. Click Add at the top right corner and select Add Leave. Select the leave type. Enter the start date and end dates for the leave. Enter the reason and click Save. That's how you apply for leave on behalf of your employees. 
leave details will now be reflected in the employee's leave balance and leave request sections. Once you apply for leave, the admin or the user with appropriate permissions can approve or reject the leave request. To do so, go to the Approvals module and select Leave Request. Select the Leave Request. Here you can either approve or reject the request. Viewing Employee Leave Balance Under Leave Balance, you can view the leaves requested by your employees leave balances and the total number of leaves available for the year. You can click the edit icon to modify the effective date of the leave type and the total count of leaves for the year. Then click save. Regularizing attendance on behalf of employees. If an employee forgets to clock in or out, regularizing attendance helps avoid discrepancies in their working hours and ensures they are compensated correctly. To regularize their attendance, Go to the Leave tab, click Add at the top right corner and select Add Regularization. Select the date range and enter the actual check-in and check-out hours. Select the reason and click Save. Once you apply for regularization, the admin or the user with appropriate permissions can approve or reject the regularization request. To do so, go to the Approvals module and select Attendance. Select the regularization request. Here you can either approve or reject the request. Once the request is approved, the attendance details will be updated in the employee's attendance records. To view them, go to the attendance tab and select regularization here. Managing employee absence. If an employee was absent, you can convert the absence to any leave type to maintain accurate leave records and ensure the employee is compensated correctly. To do so, go to the Attendance tab, select the day when they were absent and click Apply Leave. Enter the details and click Save. Once the request is approved, the employee's absence will be converted to leave. You can also regularize recorded absences ensuring accurate and up-to-date attendance records. Managing LOP during pay run. Let's see how you can manage the employee's LOP during pay run. Go to the pay runs module. Click create pay run to process the pay run for the month. Click fetch data. The LOP data of the employee for the month will be fetched during the pay run. Configuring permissions for leave and attendance. After setting up leave and attendance, you can configure roles and permissions to manage who can access and manage the leave and attendance module. Go to Settings, select Users and Roles and create a role to assign the necessary permissions to manage and oversee leave and attendance records. Reports and Analytics Go to the Reports module. Here you can view your employee's leave and attendance reports. In the Attendance Reports, you can get a comprehensive insight into your employee's attendance patterns including daily status, summary reports and overtime tracking. Similarly, Leave Reports provides insight into employee leave balances, leave encashment, and more. The Payroll LOP report not only gives a detailed view of loss of pay instances for employees, but it is also used to update LOP during the pay run process. You can filter and customize your reports as well. Disabling Leave and Attendance If you no longer require the Leave and Attendance module, you can choose to disable them. You can choose to disable only the attendance module if needed. And that's a wrap for our video.